Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to take a look at Ford. Uh, recently I was reading online, someone was comparing Ford to Tesla and they're like, Ford's on this whole new strategy and path to, to turn around the company. Thought it was pretty interesting, a little bit outlandish, uh, but figured I'd dig into it to, to see what I could find. And to my surprise, I actually like the steps Ford's taking. Um, and I think it's pretty interesting stuff. Uh, they've recently launched um, or announced a new strategy campaign. Um, and really what it's doing is it's taking Ford and splitting it into three divisions. Um, so there's going to be Ford Blue, Ford Model E, and Ford Pro. Um, and I really like this. They're going to operate them as separate units uh, with kind of shared services in the back. So probably like shared accounting, financing, marketing, things like that. But the individual um, kind of like what it sounds like is manufacturing, leadership, design, innovation, R&D, things like that are going to be done individually at each division. And they're going to announce P&L separately. Um, I like this because it could, you know, if Ford Model E division, which is their electric vehicle and is doing really well, you could carve that out potentially um, and make it a separate standalone company just focused on EVs that could then compete directly with Tesla. Uh, but, but we'll see how it kind of goes in the future. I'm sure they're still going to share manufacturing plants and things like that. So it, it wouldn't be quite as simple to just directly split them out. Um, but I do like the direction they're taking and think it's pretty interesting. So the three divisions though, real quick, will be Ford Blue. That's gonna be their traditional ICE vehicle. Um, and they're primarily looking to just cut costs there. Uh, and then Ford Model E is gonna be focused purely on electric vehicles. And it's gonna be looking purely to take market share and grow um, and invest in their electric vehicle fleet. So I think this is a good sign. They're taking all their resources and finally getting on the electric vehicle train and pumping all the, all the dollars there. Um, and then Ford Pro, they talked briefly on this. It's not a big deal. It's just their uh, government and fleet vehicle program, very small. Um, it doesn't really move the needle, just something uh, they have as well. Now with all this announcement of new strategy, they actually did uh, put out some uh, new financial guidance. Um, you can see the adjusted EBIT, uh, about 8% margin. Uh, they calculate their EBIT a bit differently than I do. Um, but what I've done in my model is they're going from 7.3 to 8% margin um, is their guidance. So I've been, I've taken that 70 BIPs uh, margin expansion and applied it to my EBIT numbers. For their EBIT, they include a little bit of their other income, um, which I'm not as comfortable doing. So I, I back that out. Um, seems like they inflate their EBIT a little bit, um, but you know everyone cal calculates it a little bit different. The other thing is they're spending about $5 billion on CapEx investments this year for their EV portfolio. Uh, I'm looking at this as a one-time investment, really, uh, to jumpstart EVs. And then it'll be, you know, increased levels of CapEx going forward, but not to that same level. And then they give us guidance for 2026, um, expanding EBIT margins by 300 basis points up to 10%. So uh, exciting stuff there that we layer into our model as well. And then they also announced that they're expecting to produce 2 million vehicles, electric vehicles um, annually by 2026. And that'll be about one third of their global volume. Um, so I think they're taking a lot of the right steps. And I think it's a pretty interesting um, and exciting time. Um, and I threw together a quick comparison just against Tesla. Um, you can see right now Ford, right, trades at about one twelfth uh, the market cap of Tesla. Enterprise value, they both have a net cash position, so the enterprise value is actually less than the market cap. But if we look at cars sold, right, Ford is actually selling twice as many cars. Um, the difference is Tesla is all electric vehicles and Ford is all um, ICE vehicles. So, you know, Tesla gets that premium as being electric vehicle manufacturing. Um, even though they're producing half as many cars as Ford, but they're valued 12 times as high. So I think that says something about Tesla's valuation as well as Ford's valuation. Um, 2026 estimated EV deliveries. Um, Tesla's I calculated as a run rate based off historical kind of averages of adding about 100,000 deliveries per quarter. Um, so getting up to about 3 million, that would put them easily in kind of a top five auto manufacturer, I think. So I think that's you know pretty reasonable. And then Ford has told us they're anticipating about 2 million of EVs. Um, from a revenue standpoint, we can see Ford actually does about three times as much revenue as Tesla. The difference here though, is the EBITDA. Um, so a lot more of those dollars flow through to EBITDA for Tesla than they do for Ford. Uh, so the EBITDA margins are much higher for Tesla, which I think is attractive and a good sign, especially as Tesla is this growth company and they have margins this high. Um, once they're kind of more stable and more mature, I would expect those margins to go up more. Um, something to note about Tesla though is um, of that 9 billion of EBITDA, I think about one and a half billion of that is actually from their, um, federal, like environmental credits that they get for selling clean energy credits to other companies, which flows through at hundred percent margin. So if you back those out, they're actually closer to a, a 14, 15% EBITDA margin. Um, so something just to note, um, those will go away. So while yes, they are doing uh, much better on the margins than Ford, um, it's not quite double. If you back out kind of those one-off regulatory credits that will go away. So let's hop over into our DCF real quick. 
and we'll we'll talk through what we got for the valuation. Um, so I've modeled in here. If we come down here and look at my EBIT. EBITDA and EBIT margins. Um, you can see I have the same kind of expansion. By 2026, it was going to go up 300 basis points. It's roughly what I have in here. Um, so we have that kind of modeled in. We have the CapEx modeled in here with a $5 million spike from 2021. Um, so kind of modeled based off their longer term guidance. Um, you know, modest revenue growth. Their revenue in 2021 is still below their 2016 revenue. Um, so hopefully that kind of, you know, they actually start growing in reverse, especially when supply chain issues go away. Um, so with all of that said, I'm getting a valuation, um, you know, I'm using a 10 to 14% whack. I think this is pretty risky. They're transitioning to EV. The market has to take to it and like it. It seems pretty popular so far. I think the Ford, um, F-150 Lightning and the Mach-E both have like 250,000 pre-orders or something like that. So they're both doing very well from a pre-order standpoint. Um, now it's, can they produce them and deliver them? Um, which if they can, you know, I think, uh, their, their plans for the EV future will hold. Um, but I get a valuation between, um, if we use the 12%, 81 to 84 billion, uh, which, you know, that's about 27% more than their current valuation at about 65 billion. So I definitely think there's room here. Um, I think if they can improve margins even better, you know, there could be more room. Um, but I think Ford is finally kind of on the right path and doing the right things to transition this legacy auto manufacturer to kind of the, the 21st century and, you know, EV first focus, uh, I think is a good sign. And I think the market will appreciate it over time. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's an interesting play. I think it'll be interesting to see, um, how many electric vehicles they continue to produce, produce throughout the year. Ford publishes, I think, a monthly sales report uh, where they say how many vehicles they produce. So you could kind of monitor that and see is their electric vehicle production actually scaling as anticipated? And if so, um, you know, might not be a bad bad opportunity to take a, a position here. Um, so I think it's a pretty interesting, exciting company. Um, one last thing I'll hit on real quick that's a little slightly related here. If you go to an aggregator and look at Ford's debt, um, you're going to see it report like 120, 130 billion. Um, the reason for that is if you look here at their balance sheet, they have financial services debt and automotive debt. Automotive debt is their traditional debt um, that you would think of for a company. They have about 20 billion of it. This is what you would think of when you think of a company um, taking out a loan to, to fund operations, to fund buybacks, things like that. Um, that's the automotive long-term debt. The financial services debt payable, which comes out to 120 billion, uh, this is for their financial services division. So what this is, is they have their own credit arm. So if you go um, buy a Ford and you take a loan from Ford credit, what's going to happen is they're going to go to the bank and they're going to get a loan for 1% um, from, you know, whatever bank, and then they're going to loan it to you at two and a half percent. So they're working as kind of the middleman there. Uh, but that loan they take for 1%, they do have to record on their balance sheet. Um, so it's just something to note there that they do have $120 billion of debt. If these were a bunch of subprime auto loans, um, they could default and be really bad for Ford. I don't think that's the case. And a lot of them, they're actually all asset backed, right? They're backed by the vehicles they're selling. Um, so there's still some value, um, underneath behind these loans and actually seeing these numbers grow is usually a good sign because it shows that they're selling more vehicles, um, and financing them. So I think that that actually is a good sign, not necessarily a bad sign. Um, when that number grows, but uh, just something to note, they do have that. So, um, you know, before you were to make any investment, you'd need to be comfortable understanding that balance sheet because that's a, you know, that's twice their market cap and debt, um, but it's for their financial services. If you actually look at their income statement, they have financial service revenue. So of that 120 billion of debt, right? They made $10 billion of revenue off of it. Um, so just something to, to consider as you think through Ford. Um, but, you know, I think it's a interesting company. I think it's an attractive opportunity. I think if their electric vehicle production continues and they can convince the market they're an electric, you know, manufacturer, um, electric vehicle manufacturer, I think uh, it could be a really exciting play. So anyways, thanks for tuning in. I hope you found this interesting. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below and I'll get back to you. Thanks so much.